This is the video for your notes on order of operations, which cover pages 67 and 68. You'll need a pencil and a set of colors. The set of colors can be from highlighters, colored pencils, markers, or crayons, and you'll need red or pink, yellow, green, and blue. I want you to add the word coefficients to this definition. So this first vocab word is a number sentence that uses numbers, coefficients or constants, variables, operations, exponents or grouping symbols. There is no statement of equality. There is also no statement of inequality. So no equal signs and no inequality symbols will be found in these. So the numbers that are with our variables are called coefficients. So when I look at the variables, the numbers that are with them are the coefficients. So let's look at our variables. Our variables are our letters, our unknowns, or our symbols. And the coefficients are the numbers that are with those variables. So the 2, 3, 4, and 2 are right next to or being multiplied by our variable. And the constants are these numbers that are alone or not with the variable term. We have operations, which are the plus or minus signs that we see here. And the exponents are the numbers that are written in uh, the upper right hand corner of your variable. Now the exponent on a variable that doesn't really have one is just understood to be one. And then we have grouping symbols. The most common grouping symbols that you'll see this year are parentheses, but there are other grouping symbols that you'll see in later years. So these whole sentences, there are two examples of different expressions. To find the value of an algebraic expression by simplifying it down to one number, or find the value of, simplify, solve, they all relatively mean the same thing in this situation. So to the right we have an example where you're solving an equation. Um, and it could be used to solve an equation or to simplify an expression. So we're solving to see what r is actually equal to. And evaluate is used in many different contexts. And for the algebraic expression, you're going to be simplifying it down to one number. So you'll see a simplify or evaluate often when you're working with expressions. And the acronym that helps you to remember the order in which the operation should be completed in an expression is called PEMDAS. And I kind of gave the answer away with that one. Uh, don't really have very many pictures to show PEMDAS, but we are just going to write it as P-E-M-D-A-S. And that's the order in which you should be doing the operations in an expression. So P stands for parentheses. E is going to be for exponents, M for multiplication, D for division, A for addition, and S for subtraction. Multiplication and division are actually in the same group. Multiplication doesn't always come first. It's whichever one is first in the problem. Addition and subtraction are in their own group, and you sometimes do subtraction first, sometimes do addition first, depending on what comes first when you're reading the problem from left to right. P stands for parentheses. And this is the ste uh, first step in the order of operations. So you want to simplify everything inside the parentheses down to one number. And then you can move on to the other steps. So we are going to simplify everything that is inside or on the inside of this set of parentheses. We don't want to do anything that's outside of the parentheses until everything on the inside is simplified down to one number. And once we have this done, then step one is finished. But don't drop those parentheses. 
Uh, so here we have an exponent. So step two is we're going to go through and evaluate all of the exponents that are outside of the parentheses. So he, in this case, 3 is the exponent. And whenever you see an exponent, you need to expand and then multiply. So if we're going to expand 4 to the third power, or 4 cubed, we're going to write that for 1, 2, 3 times, and then we're going to multiply. 4 times 4 is 16, times another 4 is 64. Now for step 3, when all of our exponents are evaluated, we are going to multiply, or use multiplication, or we are going to use division. Now, I put the M and D on top of each other because it's not always the multiplication that comes first, even though PEMDAS has the M coming first. Uh, so we have a bunch of different ways that we can write division. Uh, we have two different ways that we could write division. We have a bunch of different ways that we can write multiplication. So you could see the X. You could see it with parentheses. You can see a little asterisk, or you could see uh, the dot. So step three is finishing all the multiplication and division. But we complete this by moving from left to right. So multiplication might be first, or division might be first. It depends on the problem. So in the problem, if you see multiplication uh, going from left to right, if you see that multiplication first, you're going to do that multiplication first. But moving from left to right, if the division sign comes first, you're going to complete that division first. Now, step four is going to be with addition, which doesn't necessarily always come first, or subtraction, which might sometimes come first, depending on the problem. So with addition, we have the addition and subtraction signs here. Um, but here, just like step three, we're moving from left to right. So once all the parentheses are evaluated, the exponents are simplified, all of the multiplication and division is evaluated, then we move on to addition and subtraction. So if the addition sign comes first, we do addition. But if the subtraction sign comes first when we're moving from left to right, then we'll do the subtraction. Addition doesn't always come first, and subtraction doesn't always come first. It depends on the problem. These are the things that you need to be very cautious about. First is multiplication can be written in different ways with the parentheses, the dot, or the x. And there's actually a few other ways. Uh, you need to make sure you don't drop parentheses because parentheses means multiplication and 4 times 5 is 20, not 45. And you f if you forgot the parentheses, then you might write that as 45, which is a completely different number. A uh, second thing is that exponents need to be expanded. So four to the, 5 to the third power is not equal to 15. You don't do 5 times 3. You expand the 5 3 times and write 5 times 5 times 5. And 5 times 5 is 25 times that last 5. You can do the multiplication off to the side. 5 times 5 is 25. We're carrying the 2 and bringing the 5 down. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 more is 12, so that 25 times the last 5 would be 125. So I would replace 5 cubed with the answer of 125 if I'm evaluating an exponent using the order of operations. Third thing is that a fraction bar separates the problem into two smaller ones. So if I take the numerator, and I can use order of operations here, I'll do the exponent before the multiplication. And 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8. Then I would multiply and get 24. So the answer to the numerator expression is 24. And here I'll work on the denominator. And when I'm moving from left to right, this uh, uh, multiplication comes first. So 4 times 3 is 12. Then I would divide by 2. And if I Write this 8 and the answer of 6, and it looks like 86. So we need to make sure we remember to write those parentheses. And then that uh, 8 times 6 is 48, and that's the answer to our denominator. Now we simplified the top expression and the bottom expression, but now we need to simplify that fraction. So looking at this, I can find factors that would go into 24 and 48. They're both even, so I know that I could 
uh, divide the top and bottom by 2. I could divide by 3. Uh, I could divide by 4, by 6, by 8. I could actually divide by 12 or 24 as well. Um, and sometimes you find something that they have in common, and I'm just going to use the 6. So I know my 6 multiplication facts really easily. So 6 times 4 is 24, and 6 times 8 is 48. But they're both even still, so I might need to simplify further. And I'm going to divide by 4. You could have done 2 as well. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. And I can't put anything else in there, so now it is as simplified as I could possibly make that fraction. Uh, exponents apply to what they're next to. So this 3 is next to these parentheses, so I want to raise the answer that's on the inside of these parentheses to the third power. So multiplication comes before addition, and 2 times 3 is 6, and we write everything that we haven't used yet. 6 plus 4 is 10, and 10 times 10 is 100 times another 10 is 1,000, so I need to expand that exponent. But I'm bringing the exponent on the answer. And over here, the exponent's right next to the 4. So I want to expand that 4, not the answer. And I know that the 4 to the third power is 64. And then we're going to do multiplication to get 6. And then we'll do that addition to get 70. Now, if we look at these two answers, 70 compared to 1,000 or 1,000 compared to 70, they're definitely not the same answer. So this exponent is applied to the answer that you end up getting that's inside the parentheses. And the exponent on the right is right next to the 4. So I want to expand that 4 instead of expanding the answer like in the first situation. The first thing that we need to do is write PEMDAS. And this is to help us remember the order in which we're allowed to do these operations. So P stands for parentheses, but we don't have any. We don't have any exponents. Multiplication and division are together, so I see a multiplication sign here. And 2 times 3 is 6. And then we're going to rewrite everything else that we haven't used yet. So the answer to this problem 2 times 3 is 6, but everything outside that box that I just drew needs to be rewritten because we haven't used it yet. Now there's no more multiplication and division, so we're done with step 3. And now we're looking for addition and subtraction. And we're going to go from left to right. So we see this addition symbol first. We're going to do 6 plus 6 is 12. And we're going to rewrite this minus 4 because we haven't done that operation yet. And the last thing that we see here is subtraction, and 12 minus 4 is equal to 8. And that is our final simplified answer because it's simplified down to one number. And now we've finished our order of operations for number one. We are going to write PEMDAS again for number two. And I like to sometimes put the M and D next to each other and the A and S next to each other. So we see that they are in the same step. So I don't see any parentheses, going to cross out P. I don't see any exponents, so I don't have to do any exponents. I do see multiplication and division. Um, but when I move from left to right, I see this division problem before the multiplication problem, so I'm going to do that first. 33 divided by 3 is 11, and that times 2 plus 4 needs to be re re rewritten, because I haven't used it yet. So now I'm going to do the multiplication, and 11 times 2 is 22. And then we're going to add the 22 and the 4. So 22 plus 4 is 26. And that's my final simplified answer. Now, this is what your order of operations should look like. But if you have to do something like 11 times 2 and you don't do that in your head, then you need to do that on the side of your paper. Or 22 plus 4 together. Uh, give you 26. That kind of work should be on the side of your paper, separate from your order of operation or algebraic work, showing each of those steps. Now for question number three, we're going to write PEMDAS again so we know what order we should be doing those operations in. So if we look here, we see parentheses. 
So I'm going to do everything on the inside of those parentheses. And PEMDAS kind of restarts when you move inside of a set of parentheses. So I'm going to write another PEMDAS over here. So inside here, I don't have uh, inside those parentheses, that's all I'm going to be looking at. So I don't have any other parentheses inside of those parentheses, but you will in later years. I do have exponents inside of those parentheses. So that 3 squared, I am going to put the answer of 3 squared, well, 3 times 3 is equal to 9. Remember, it's not 3 times 2. You have to expand that exponent. So 3 squared is equal to 9, and then I'm going to rewrite everything else that I have not used yet. Now, inside those parentheses, I'm done with the exponents. I don't have any multiplication or division, but I do have subtraction. So I'm going to do that subtraction, and 9 minus 6 is 3. I'm going to rewrite everything else that I haven't used yet. Now, I am done with everything inside of that set of parentheses, so now my original set of parentheses is done. I don't have anything else to do inside there. Now I'm going to move on to the exponent step. So for the exponent step, I'm moving from left to right, and I see 5 squared with an exponent is the first one that I see, and that's 25. Don't do 5 times 2 equals 10. It's 5 times 5. Make sure you expand that exponent and then multiply. You have to expand it. And I'm going to rewrite everything else that I have not used yet. And I'm not done with exponents because I see another exponent, and that's right next to the parentheses, but I already have my answer, so I know that that's going to be 3 squared, or 3 times 3, which equals 9 again, and I rewrite everything else. Now I'm done with exponents, and there aren't any multiplication or division signs, so now I'm on to the addition or subtraction step. So all I have to do is add, and 9 plus 5 is 14, so I'm going to put the 4 here, carry the 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3, so 34 is my final simplified answer for expression number 3. Looking at number 4, we are going to write PEMDAS once more. And parentheses, do I have parentheses? Yeah. So I'm going to do everything inside of that set of parentheses, and PEMDAS is going to restart for that set of parentheses. So there aren't any uh, more sets of parentheses inside of the parentheses that I already have. There aren't any exponents in there either, so I don't see any exponents. I'm going to cross that off. I do see multiplication, so I'm going to do the multiplication and the multiplication or division step, and I'm going to rewrite everything else that is not being used yet. Now inside that set of parentheses, I can't do any more multiplication or division, but there is an addition problem. So 3 plus 8 is 11 and I'm going to rewrite everything on the outside. Now if I didn't put these parentheses, then this would look like 411 instead of 4 times 11, which is what those parentheses mean in this situation. So I'm done with everything inside the parentheses, which means my parentheses step is done. Now I'm going to look for exponents, and I don't see any exponents. I do see multiplication. So I'm going to do 4 times 11 is 44, because those parentheses mean multiplication. That's the biggest uh, mistake that a lot of people make. And I'm going to rewrite everything else. Now I see subtraction and addition, but I see that subtraction first when I move from left to right. So I'm going to do 50 minus 44 is equal to 6. And then I am going to add that last 2 to make 8. So the final answer for number 4 is 8. We're going to start out again by writing PEMDAS. And we look inside those parentheses, and there's only one thing to do inside the parentheses. So we're going to do that one thing. And 8 minus 2 is 6. And we're going to copy everything else that I have not used yet. Now, everything is done inside the parentheses because it's down to just one number. But we need to do this next exponent. So we expand the 6 two times, and we see 6 times 6 is 36. And we write the 5 times 8 minus the answer to 6 squared, which is 36. Now we're done with the exponents, but we do have multiplication, and 5 times 8 is 40. 
And now we're done with multiplication and division. Don't see any more multiplication or division signs. So all that's left here to do is the subtraction. And 40 minus 36 is equal to 4. So now number 5 is simplified down to the number 4. We're going to rewrite PEMDAS again. We need to do this for every single problem that we do. There's only one thing to do inside the parentheses, so we're going to do that. And 8 minus 6 is 2. We're going to write that. Uh, everything that we've done, and a lot of people forget that exponent, so make sure you don't forget that little exponent, um, because that exponent's the next thing we need to do. Uh, 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. I'm going to write the 2 3 times. The exponent is your counter. 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8, so 2 cubed, or 2 to the third power, is equal to 8. Now I'm going to write that 3 down here, but it means multiplication, and it looks like 38 before I put those parentheses in, so we need to make sure we put those in and rewrite everything else. Because now we are on the multiplication step, and we would have skipped that by accident if I didn't put those parentheses, which means multiplication. So 3 times 8 is 24, and then we subtract that last 3 to get 21, and that is our final simplified answer. Make sure we are not forgetting those parentheses. So for number 7, we have a numerator problem and a denominator problem. So I'm going to write PEMDAS for my numerator, and I'm going to kind of work up backwards. And we're going to do the parentheses, so 4 plus 3 is 7. Don't forget those parentheses, because that means multiplication. We do not have any exponents, but we do have this multiplication, and we're going to get a 14. And we don't have anything else to do, so the answer to the expression in the numerator is 14, so I'm going to put that answer in the numerator, matching the problem up with its answer. I'm going to rewrite PEMDAS for the denominator of this problem, or the bottom of the fraction. There aren't any parentheses or exponents. There is division, so I'm going to divide 6 divided by 2 to get 3, and rewrite the rest of the problem. And then we have subtraction to get 1. And now we're done simplifying the bottom or the denominator. And 14 divided by 1 is equal to 14. So 14 over 1 is the same as just 14 holes. We're going to do the same thing for the expression in number 8. So we're going to write PEMDAS for our numerator. And there aren't any sets of parentheses. So we're going to cross that out. We do have exponents, so we are going to evaluate that exponent. And 4 to the second power means 4 times 4. Do not put 8. 4 times 2 is 8, but that's not how we write 4 times 2. This is 4 squared, which means 4 times 4, which would give me 16. So I put the answer to that exponent, and then I rewrite everything else that I have not used yet. So I'm done with the exponent. I don't have any multiplication or division, but I do have an addition problem. And 6 plus 16 gives me 22. So 22 is the answer to the expression that is in the numerator. So I'm going to write that answer in the numerator. For the denominator problem, I'm going to rewrite PEMDAS and follow the order of operations for this denominator. There's no parentheses, but there's an exponent. That's not 3 times 2, guys. Please don't do 3 times 2. That means that we're going to expand the 3 2 times, and 3 times 3 is equal to 9. So we're going to put the answer to that exponent, rewrite everything else. I don't have any multiplication or division, so now I only have that addition problem to do left. And 9 plus 13 is equal to 22, and I'm going to put that answer in the denominator for the denominator problem. Now 22 divided by 2 is equal to 1, so my final simplified answer is 1.